that we're ready for language today, language being Friday, March 27th. Uh, you'll need page 136 and page 137 today. While you're getting that together, I've had some of your favorite zoo animals to come back. Um, so remember, we had to write the favorite animal. You wrote two interesting things about what they look like, where what they do or where they live, and you checked all your grammar and punctuation, and then you were convinced that that was your favorite animal, okay? So I'll start with Charlie. Hey, Charlie. Wolves, thank you for sending it in. Uh, wolves are gray and white. True. They are facts. They look like dogs. Yes, they do. And Biscuit looks like a little dog, a little wolf, right? <laughs> a little baby wolf. Um, wolves live in the forest. True. That's true. Charlie corrected all of his um, capitalizations, punctuations, and he said, obviously, the best kind of animal to go see at the zoo is the wolf. So thank you, Charlie, for yours. Lillian, hey, Lil, got yours. Lillian wants to see the red panda. She um, wanted to see that. The red panda has white and black face markings. It has a red body and a red and black striped tail. Very true. Those are facts. Um, interesting about what it does or lives. A red panda lives in the bamboo forest of China. It eats mostly, I'm sorry, it mostly eats, plays, and naps. What a life, huh? Eat, play, and nap. And obviously, the best kind of animal to go see at the zoo is the red panda. So thank you, Lillian. Um, Aiden. Hey, Aiden. Oh, yeah, Aiden. Tiger. My favorite animal is the tiger to see. They are very, they are orange and striped, okay? Sometimes they are white. Uh, interesting about what it does, they live in rainforest, grasslands, and swamps. Wow, it's a lot of places to live. And obviously, the uh, best kind of animal to see is the tiger. So thank you for that. All right. This belongs to Kylie. Hey, Kylie. Hmm. My favorite animal to see at the zoo is a bald eagle. Bald eagles are yellow, brown, and white. Bald eagles take care of their babies. Two facts about those. The interesting fact, bald eagles live in their nest and feed fish to their young. Hmm. Hope you like fish, because that's what's for supper, right? So Kylie says, obviously, the best kind of animal to go see at the zoo is the bald eagle. So thank you guys for sending those in. And again, like I said, if I'm, I'm going through everything, if I missed any ones, I'll grab it. I'll um, put it in. You know what? Hold on one second. One second, one second. Let me make sure. Hang on. Let me make sure I have them all. All right. I think I do. But if I missed any ones, I'll be glad to read it next time. So if I did... I apologize, and I will get it next time, okay, on Monday. All right, language today, we've been talking about our pronouns. We've done work with our um, pronoun renaming a noun, um, I, me, he, him, depending on what side, if it's on the predicate side, the subject side, or the predicate side, subject being the noun, predicate being the verb. So just remember, as you're going through, um, you are looking for, let me grab my chart. Pause one second. I didn't really pause, but I'm going to run over and grab my chart, and then here we go. I just wanted to be sure I had that handy. I know we're going over those a lot. I had one question today about um, being, um, making sure that we're knowing how to figure out who or what the pronoun is renaming. So just think about it. You know, if it's um, Jennifer, in the first Jennifer 
went to the store, period. Um, and then, you know, if you wanted to, if you didn't want to say um, another um, thing about that, you could say in the next sentence, she bought ice cream. I do. I go buy ice cream. She would be who? Jennifer. Right. So you see as you, if it's on the subject side, here's your pronoun. She went to the store. The ice cream belonged to her. So we, we wouldn't say the ice cream belonged to she, but it's me. It's my ice cream. So the she is me. The her is me. The it is the ice cream. All right. So that's just your pronoun practice with that. We'll do some more of that next week. We do have um, a quiz coming up that we'll study and prepare for next week. All right. So we're going to move on today and go to our book. We are going to, um, we have two passages. One was page 134 and 135. And one was page 136 and 137. And we're talking about summarizing. Okay. Now, the page, we're going to choose page 136 and page 137. Because sometimes, you know, we have lessons and our pages are opposite as they are here. They're not front and back. So some of you may not have the man's best friend passage. It's okay. It's all right. We're summarizing maple tree. And we're going to summarize here. We we know how to summarize. We talk about this a lot. You know, sometimes we're in class and somebody has something to say. I'm like, you need a summary. Right. Okay. You fail. All right. Gotcha. That's your summary. You know, you fail 10 years ago, or not 10 years ago, maybe five years ago, and you have a summary of what happened. Now, today we're going to um, pick page 136. And this is a night at the circus. A lot can go on when you go and visit the circus, right? There's tons to see and do. Um, so on page 136, you have the poem of a night at the circus, okay? Now, this is a great poem. Um, I wish we were together where we could read it. But let's read a couple of stanzas together, and then we're going to go over what your assignment is for today. Okay, so a night at the circus. Flags were flying overhead and lights were blinking bright as we walked into the big top on that clear November night. The big top smelled of popcorn bags, cracker jacks, and hay, and we could buy 10 candy sticks or pretzels on a tray. Then the lights went down and all was quiet in the stands. But when the spotlight shone at last, the people clapped their hands. A well-dressed man said with a grin as he approached the floor, A show we have for you tonight you've never seen before. Clowns came out by dozens then in wacky reds and blues, playing many silly games and tripping on their shoes. Sounds like the circus I've been to. Very familiar reading there. Um, you're going to finish the next column reading that and um, just taking in, you know, when I was reading that, my mind went back to the circus that we went to and I could see the clown coming out and I could see those things happening. So as you're reading, let your imagination, let your mind wander as you're reading and picture those um, images in your in your mind okay when you're finished you're going to look at page 137 and we're going to write a summary and we've written many summaries for our um, pilgrim boy and for maple tree so you're just going to continue that here read a night at the circus and then list the main ideas the main ideas not the details but the main ideas okay you have your um Sequential words here, your order words, first, next, 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 I got three next, then finally, okay? So you'll go through and you'll list what happened, okay? Now, I'm going to give you the finally, 
we want to see the circus again. So you'll need to be sure that you have listed in order before finally what happened. Just like with anything else, you have the final step. You know, you take the cookies out of the oven, finally cool and enjoy. So that's your final step is eating that delicious chocolate chip cookie you just baked out of the oven. So make sure that you list in order what happens throughout the poem, okay? And then write B, use the above events to write a summary of the story. And you see in those italicizers or leaning words, use complete sentences. So please be sure that you're not saying, I like the clowns, I like the pretzels, I like the Cracker Jacks. We've got to have more variety in our sentences. Okay, we're not just speaking in three or four words. We're adding um, subjects, we're adding predicates. You know, we've talked about adjectives, even though we haven't studied it officially. We've talked about words that describe, we've talked about pronouns, we've talked about punctuation. Our capitalization rules, comma rules, you guys know a lot of pieces that you can put together. How to use word, pr words properly, how to um, use there, 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 and um, it's and it's, one being possessive. So be sure that you're using all these pieces together to write, and you'll see your vocabulary and your sentences expand. Okay? So your assignment for today it's a short video today because you have an assignment. Page 137, we'll go back and on Monday and we'll go over the um, summary there. And um, if you want to have your mom or dad or grandma, grandpa, whoever, uh, take a picture of your uh, language sheet. They can send it to me. That will be fine. And I'll share some of your circus stories. Maybe you've been to the circus before. And you can retell an actual experience that you had. So that'll be fun to be able to read. So language today, page 137. All right, so if you're following along in our order of the day, our next subject will be spelling. Um, so if you'll grab your spelling material you need, and we'll get started on spelling next. Or if you're ready for lunch or break or a nap, whatever you're ready to do. But whenever you're ready, come back for spelling.